Hey everyone, Atlas starring Jennifer Lopez is streaming on Netflix and it caught my attention because I am a sucker for AI and robot films. So remember, as we get into this review, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much. All right, so Atlas, this film takes place in the distant future as human society tries to recover from a war with an AI-powered robot named Harlan that mysteriously achieved free will and killed millions of humans in its effort to save humanity from itself. As the war turned, it disappeared to a far-off planet, taking all of the other AIs that it freed with it. And humanity is sure that they will all return someday and finish the job they started in killing off humanity. Jennifer Lopez plays Atlas Shepard, the daughter of the AI engineer who created Harlan. She has a special link to the AI that gives her these insights into what Harlan has in store. When she learned about the military mission to go to the planet where they believe Harlan is hiding in order to destroy him, Atlas talks her way into the mission, which really doesn't go as planned. Jennifer Lopez does a decent job in the film, and you do get a sense that she is really enjoying branching out and playing an action hero. However, she's not really the best fit for the film, or maybe it's just that the film doesn't give her that much depth to play with in her role. Simu Liu plays Harlan. He is terrific in the film. He feels cool and distant easily pulling off the role of a killer AI. He's been in a bunch of terrific films from Shang-Chi, The Legend of Ten Rings, and Barbie, and even Arthur the King, which was surprisingly good. I love dog stories too. So maybe go see Arthur the King. That's a good film to watch. The film also stars Sterling Brown as Colonel Elias Banks, a hard case military leader for the mission who's bent on killing Harlan. Yeah, he's like really obsessed with it too. I always like Sterling in any role he plays because he's just so compelling as usual. He does a great job with this role. So Atlas definitely has some interesting moments like the developing friendship between Atlas, the character and the AI that inhabits the body armor suit that she puts on during the initial battle with Harlan when they land on the planet. I kind of like this because it helps to create some depth and layering between what we think of as good AI and bad AI, especially in this film where it's really, really clear cut that there's bad AI. I like that there's some depth there for people to kind of think outside the box that maybe not all AI is bad, maybe not all AI is good. What is that that gray area? What's that middle space? However, really have to stretch to find other things in the film that I thought were compelling. Well, actually there's one thing. I thought the bodysuits were cool, but you know what? We've seen versions of those before and there's I don't know, there wasn't really that much original about it other than um, having an AI inside of it that paired with the human being. But even that wasn't all that original. It still was interesting. For a science fiction movie, though, I found the story to actually be pretty bland and uninventive. There's nothing here that we haven't seen before. And the AIs in the film, they really don't feel special or unique. The result is an average feeling film that gives you something to watch while eating a pint of ice cream and burning a couple hours on the sofa. What bothers me most about the film is that it feels like the sort of sci-fi film that you would imagine studios would create for a streaming platform rather than as a feature film for a theatrical release. I don't think this kind of bias should exist in filmmaking either make a good film or don't make a good film. Don't make a bad film. And I guess sometimes you don't know how the film is gonna turn out until the end. And I suppose maybe that could be what happened here. 
but I don't know, just the way this movie feels, it feels like the film definitely plays into that theme of like lesser quality films releasing into streaming, higher quality films releasing into theater. And I hate that that dynamic exists. Just saying that bothers me because Netflix, Prime, Apple, and others have actually created some really great films over the last few years that were light years better than Atlas. And I hate that Atlas feels like that stereotypical film that you would expect them to rate as only being good enough to release on streaming. The film really could have been so much better. It was on the edge of being so much better. And I wonder if it's production quality for things like CGI and a more nuanced script would have been different if a studio had picked it up and produced it with the intention of a theatrical release. I just don't know. I just don't know. Overall, though, while Atlas is decent and it's actually doing pretty well at this point on Netflix, I can think of a bunch of other films that far outshine this one. If you're looking for a movie to burn some time, Atlas would work. It would do the job. If you're looking for a layered and interesting science fiction story that will really grip you and really entertain you, I don't think you're going to be happy with Atlas. It's just not going to hit that mark. All right, that's it for now. I hope you like this review, even if the film isn't for you. So please do give the review a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos because there are more coming. In the meantime, Happy viewing, and I will see you all again soon. Thanks so much. Bye.